Amen. Let's give a better hand clap to Jesus. It's a wonderful morning today. Amen. Let's lift up our hands to the Lord as we just take time to pray and worship Him. Just lift up your hands before Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Just close your eyes, lift up your hands. Can we worship for a minute? Just in your own way. We give you praise, O God. You have brought us back to this holy mountain. That we may experience your goodness. Sometimes you don't need a song, you just need to talk to that good friend, our Heavenly Father. And some of us, you may not have a, had a chance this week to pray, so this is your time to pray. The busyness of life that robs us from the opportunity to interact with the Lord. Can you take this moment as a solemn moment to talk to the Father? wherever you are. You don't need to look for big words. Just from your heart. Father, thank you for the week. Thank you that you're holding my hand. Thank you that you're lifting my heart. Thank you that I will not drown in the infirmities of life. Thank you that when I'm sick, you have healed me. Don't look for big words from your heart. Yes, stay there. Talk to him. Talk to him. We are praying, we are praying. Oh, Father. Ah, ah. Oh, Father. Ah, ah. Oh, Father. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, Father. Ah, ah, ah. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. 
For some of you it's a song. For some of you it's a song. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Talk to the Lord. I bring my family before you. I bring my academics before you. I bring my heart. I bring my mind. I bring everything within me before you, oh God. Take over, my Father. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hey. Hey, yeah. Father, we choose to honor you this morning. Forgive us for being too busy and forgetting that this is a place to be in you. And Father, there is someone who is pouring their hearts to you today. May you honor that heart today. Honor that heart today. Someone is being filled now. <laughs> it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. If you came to spectate, if you came to, to church so that you can feel nice that you came, you, you can wait for the end. This is for those who know that this is a place a moment like this is where they receive the, the power that they need for the week. Spectators, you can wait for the end. This is, this is for those who, de who are desiring. <laughs> Father, thank you for giving me six days to go out into the world. I come back with honor in this seventh day that I will keep this Sabbath holy by taking time to connect with you. Can you talk to the Father one more time? And just pour out your heart to him. Oh, 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 Feel me, feel me. Ah, ah, ah. Yes, feel me, feel me. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Tell the Lord to feel you. Tell the Lord to feel you. Oh, oh. Feel me, feel me. Feel me with your grace. Feel me with your power. Feel me with your love. Feel me with your goodness. Feel me with your power. Fill me with your goodness, oh, hey, yeah. oh, hey. Fill me with your power, hey, hey. Fill me with your goodness, fill me with your love. For this hungry heart, I desire, hey, oh, oh. oh. stay there, stay there, stay there, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, 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 hey. Oh, 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 oh,
Yes, do it Stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. Oh, feel me, feel me, feel me. Hey! Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh! Oh! Give you praise. even for the word that you're just about to receive. I thank you for the mighty things that you will do. It is such an honor and a privilege not to be seen. It is a privilege to be hidden that you may be seen, Father. So we silence every flesh now. We silence every controlling powers, controlling spirits maneuvering spirits. I take authority over you right now in the name of Jesus. I declare that this is an open atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to impart and teach his people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost, search the deep things of God. Reveal them to us even in this moment. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. While you're still standing, I want to read just one verse. Um, Share a quick charge and then like us to take some time before we go to just pray. Um, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 to 18 and then James 5 verse 16. Um, our sermon series for this month is advanced. We are advancing deeper and deeper even as we get into the half of the year. And for this service, um, we are talking on matters of prayer. The disciples came to Jesus and they told Jesus, teach us how to pray. We have seen the disciples of John praying and we will desire for you to teach us how to pray. So prayer must be taught. As young as we are, we have been receiving the understanding of how important prayer is. But there is also a sequence of knowing how to pray not just knowing the benefits of prayer or why we need to pray, it is also important to know how to pray. So the disciples came to Jesus and he began to teach them on the pathway of prayer. Now, if you don't have an understanding and the knowledge of prayer, it will just be a ritual. It will just be a weird thing that people do in church. But when you understand prayer and the fullness of it, then you will not only grow in prayer, but you will also see great results. Um, when, you see, when you see a small man, when you see someone who does not have capacity as it were in terms of what they can do by themselves, and you see them doing mighty things, it is because they are being backed up by a higher authority. How you tap into that power is through this instrument of prayer. Prayer is not, is not a gimmick. It's, it's, it's even more than speaking in tongues. Because you can speak in tongues um, and you just released ATP. And energy was exuded and you leave the prayer altar tired. It is the understanding that backs. Everything that we do in this kingdom is backed by the requisite understanding that we have. So when you come to the table of prayer and you have the understanding on how to engage this master key then you are able to enter into the fullness of life. Some of us have made it to where we are today, not because of manipulation, not because of anything else, 
it is because we have stayed long on this path of prayer. If you talk to our fathers, our parents, um, the kind of the kind of results they have commanded through the years is because they attained to this key. Please don't wait to learn how to pray when you're 70. 70 years is the year of harvest because the youthful days is a seed that you plant so that you can grow in joy and you can enter into the days of harvest in your old age. So don't waste this tender age with meaningless things, um, all this hula baloo of social media and all the things that we are seeing in our time. Part of the investment as a young person is to invest in this key of prayer. Now, you may start from a low scale, but it is a muscle that grows. And the more you grow into it, last week I took time to show you the progression of prayer from how we begin to pray to the place where we get results. And if you are not here, I would urge you to go back online. Uh, that was part two of this sermon series. And you'll begin to see and begin to understand that this is a lifeline of an individual. What oxygen is to the lungs is what prayer does to the life of a believer. So Esther prayed, and she was young like we are. David, as a teenager, when he was in the wilderness, 15 years, 16 years, 17 years, he prayed. That is how he was able to access higher levels of authority. Can you imagine if you begin to pray now? Look at your age right now. Just put your age in your mind. You have an opportunity to start early in this place of prayer. Your life will have a difference between you and those who just wasted their lives on things that don't matter. So as we go to part three today, I pray that you will open your heart again so that we may receive and so that we may have that understanding for where we are in our time. Ephesians 6, 17 to 18. Help us, O God. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Next verse, we are reading to 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now, if God has blessed you with a voice today, can we read verse um, 18 together. Please go back to Ephesians 6, 18. Now tell your neighbor, neighbor. Okay. They feel like they want to feel much special. Tell them, dear neighbor, please read scripture. Okay. 3, 2, 1. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Be watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Let's go to James now. Let's go to James. Now let us read together again. One, two, three, go. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Please have your seats. Um, if you can, please take notes. James 5.16 is a clear indication on what prayer does when we understand when, how we ought to pray. It says, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, there is the effective part. I want you to look at that verse very carefully because it says the effective. That means that prayer can be ineffective. So, there are two ingredients there that are important for your prayer to avail much. Can you give me that same verse in, um, in NIV? I don't know if we also have NLT, but we can look at NIV. Now look at what the Bible says from NIV, James 5.16. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Now, we are going to take time to really look at this very carefully. 
So prayer begins because there is a person to pray. So in Luke 18 verse 1, it says, Men always ought to pray. Jesus spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray. Now men here is inclusive of both genders, male and female. So that means that the beginning point of prayer is that there must be someone to pray. Please, please listen carefully. If <laughs> See, this generation, we, are, we need to learn about deeper things of life. Because the things that we have been taught are important is writing memes and posting nice photos. Now, no problem with that. If that's your thing, please keep doing it. But there is more to life than seeking for likes. I met a girl a few weeks ago. She was so downtrodden, so hurt. And I thought it was a big, big matter of life. And she told me, Pastor Maxi, I'm feeling so depressed right now because every time I post my photos, I only get four likes. Now, don't laugh. It's a very serious. And as you're thinking about her testimony of being broken, you also need to think about yourself as well. So there are more deeper things of life. So when you come to church, it is an opportunity for us to walk away and dissociate ourselves from the things that don't matter. And we come into an atmosphere of knowledge. I'm saying this because um, it's so easy to be distracted. It's so easy to gist around, especially because maybe you're seated with someone that you came with or someone you like and you want to get points from them after the service. Please focus. Somebody say amen. amen. So tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm sitting next to you today, but you need to focus. So Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. So it means that the beginning point of prayer is that there must be someone who is willing to journey in that place of prayer. Now please go back to James 5.16 The prayer of a righteous man, New King James says the prayer of a righteous man the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now we have already indicated that if there is no person to pray then the journey of prayer cannot begin. But look at that verse. It says that there is a condition of the person who needs to pray. The condition of the person who is going to pray is righteousness. Now, can I have one gentleman as a volunteer? Have you been here before? Okay, come. Okay, let's appreciate this gentleman. He's looking nice in a suit. Now, okay. Is this your look nice yeah okay so God seeks for this man because there is something that must be released on the earth through his prayer so prayer begins from the availability of a person please write it down the journey of prayer begins from the availability of a person now you must be willing to be available because not so many people are available to pray. If you actually design a prayer meeting, ah, sometimes you really have to conjure people's hearts so that they can come. You know those days, Deconate, we used to title our, our prayer meetings in the morning prayer breakfast. And I told my team, take away that name, breakfast. Because that's not the inspiration. So some even marketing, we have to market, put nice so those posters would have, would have bread and juice saying, come and pray. Because some, if, you, if you really want to know how weak you are, just start to pray. 
you just close your room and say, today I'm going to pray. And you begin to talk to the Lord. You will now know that there is so much weight in your soul. One of the ways we gauge how far, how much we have contacted into, in how much presence we have been able to carry is to begin to pray. Your soul is a good indicator because there is weight that is captured in our lives. You see, when you're going through life, um, and we've taught you this, there's a lot of things that we accumulate as you go through life. You accumulate stress, you accumulate um, um, a lot of experiences, whether positive or negative, to the place where your soul becomes heavy. So when you begin to pray, um, you will need, first of all, to deflate. Because one of the assignments of prayer, we, we will talk about this maybe next Sunday. One of the assignments of prayer is to deflate. Like how you pull in a balloon that has a lot of air and then you begin to release that air so that the balloon can be in the original state, the resting state. Because when there is air inside, things are being pulled from side to side. So this man is now available to pray. Now, when he begins to pray, he does not have requisite knowledge or understanding on what prayer is. Maybe the first time that he was introduced to prayer is through um, um, a sequence of a, a prayer meeting that he went to or where he grew up and he was taught about many things about the rituals of prayer. That there is a way that people pray, there is a way that you need to show up, there is a way that you need to shout, there is a, all, these, all these aesthetics that were introduced into his life. So by the time he's coming to the place of prayer, there is a lot of baggage that he's carrying. But... He has an available heart. There is something that God does with someone who has a lot of imperfections, unanswered questions, but the availability of heart is still in view. And much of the disqualification of him being a powerful person of prayer comes from the voices inside his mind. Because he will stand to begin to pray and he will remember four years ago or last night, a service like this, you begin to lift up your hands and a voice comes to your mind and says, why are you lifting up your hands and you remember what you were doing last night when no one was watching you? And your hands become heavy. So there is, we must also recognize that there is a fight. The journey of starting to pray is truly a spiritual fight. Please listen carefully to what I'm telling you today. Is a fight because Jesus gives us a better, a better view on what it means when we come to the place of prayer. He says, watch and pray for the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Because the day is designed, let's say you say, um, I'm going to take a day or two days in a month to fast. The day you fast or you design to fast is a day where you remember that everything else has an offer. It's like food of us come through that week. And your flesh will be pulling you to the direction of what it needs. It's truly a fight. I was sharing this in yesterday in our prayer meeting, um, our early morning meeting yesterday, and we had an amazing time. Everyone who came, God bless you. Uh, still have a, a next month, so if you could, could you join us, you're most welcome to join us. And I was sharing with them that sometimes you design even your prayer watch. You know, some of us have prayer watches. You say, my prayer watch is 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. And you say that for the next four months, I am going to pray. Now, when you put your alarm at 2 a.m. and it begins to go off, and at that point, you now realize that this blanket is a blessing. The, the warmth, uh, the warmth that will come through your blanket between 2 to 4 you, and then you can now say, Father, you know you give your beloved good sleep. Let me slumber here because tomorrow, I promise you, Father, tomorrow by, I will not even wake up at 2 a.m. By 12, I am going to charge for six hours. Now, the next day you get home at 11 and your prayer time is 12. You now say, Father, you know, we still have revival week coming up, so I will pray then. <laughs> it's a fight. 
So, the Bible says that the righteous man. So, the posture of the one who is available is this place called righteousness. What is one of the ingredients of righteousness? Righteousness is the availability for God to lift you and help you to start the journey of prayer. It's one of the postures of righteousness. Righteousness is like a buffet. There is a portion of righteousness which is purity, holiness, understanding, having the, uh, the right way to be able to think and to do. But another one is the posture of availability. It's part of righteousness. It's the same way you have a physical body and you have hands, you have your mind, you have your, you have your feet, you have your internal organs. All of them are serving specific functions, but more so every uh, organ has a specific function that it, it releases upon your body. So now, look at this verse. It says, a righteous man, because that's where it begins. So, what is the token of righteousness that enables this man to begin to pray? It is the availability, the posture of availability. There is no one who can begin the journey of prayer. Please listen carefully. If you have not entered into that place to say that I'm available, because availability is connected to your posture of humility. No one can pray if you walk with a sense of pride. If you really want to gauge a measure of pride in your life, it is connected to prayerlessness. <laughs> prayerlessness is an indication of pride. You see, we have reduced pride to just what we say. It's more than words. So when we hear people say stuff, we now say, ah, from what they said, that's a proud man. It's more than that. It's a posture of your heart. Because I can also learn how to tweak my words. To be able to facilitate humility, but it is still false humility because I can use words, but still my heart. How many people have honored parents or spiritual authorities, but from your heart, the kind of echoes that are coming from your heart are not synonymous with what you're saying. Even before God, you can kneel before the Lord and say, Father, I supplicate myself before you. But you know that your heart is far away. You are actually waiting for that moment to end so that you can now go back to the rhythms of life. So you cannot really gauge pride from what we say and what we do. You must go deeper to the posture of the heart. Because I can stand and say, I love you, I appreciate you, but it was not really a token of what I really feel it was because for me to survive, <laughs> for me to survive in this relationship, for me to survive between my connection and my, my teachers or the people that I work with, I have learned a way of, of, um, of sanitizing that kind of manipulation so that I can receive. And when they do stuff or when they say, then we say they are humble. The deeper place is the heart. And one of the ways we gauge the heart is by your willingness to pray. Because ah, prayer is, is just is a release. Do you know what it means to put down everything you own and everything you have? Where you are like Esther, who is a queen. Do you know what it means to be a queen and then hide for three days to pray? And you're surrounded with buffet of food. You're surrounded with workers who, who work on your nails, others work on your hair, others work on your robes. They assigned different keepers of the palace to be able to take care of the specific things that the queen could do. You're surrounded by the opulence, the ambience of the palace. You eat with gold spoons. And then you say, I'm going to put all that down to be able to seek the Lord in the place of prayer. Do you know what it means to say that for that Saturday afternoon, I'm not going to go out and play football because I'm going to use that time to really stay with the Lord because I'm going into the next season of my life? Do you know what it means to put away PlayStation for a moment and say, I'm dedicating this time to talk to the Lord? Do you know what it means to walk away from your designer clothes for a moment and say, for this one hour, 
I'm just going to be here with you, oh God. I, I don't even know how, what to say, but I'm just going to show you that I'm willing. Have you gotten to a place where you're willing? <laughs> it's the first question that the Holy Spirit is asking. Teach us how to pray. So the first thing is the posture of the heart. You can come, we can design 40 prayer meetings every year. But if your heart is not open to start the journey, you, you will still be conjoled to come. And when you come, you will only come with ambulance prayers. Ambulance prayers are those prayers where we pray when we are in need. And the Lord, when you come back to the place of prayer, because of the exams, you know those days before exam week? <laughs> ah, we were powerful prayer warriors. Ah, yeah, yeah, ah. Well, you, you would pray until you feel one, one fiber in your heart is, is stretching. And then after, when we now leave that place, the last, when you drop that pen from that exam, we will now see the Lord in week eight. Because for the seven weeks, we just want to be ourselves. Now we are back to our rhythm. It's called ambulance prayers. Am I willing? It's a posture. So from the willingness of the heart, now we can engage what prayer is all about. Now watch the next thing. It says the effective and fervent prayer. So when I position myself, and I'm willing. I don't even know this thing about prayer. I don't know. I, I'm just watching. You can even come to a prayer meeting and you're observing and you're wondering, how did these people get to this level? But deep within you're saying, I'm willing. I'm willing for you to show me, Lord, I'm willing. That's the posture of righteousness. Now God begins to release two important ways by which your prayer can now enter into the place where you avail much. It says the prayer must be effective and it must be fervent. <laughs> the prayer must be effective. So effectiveness is, is a sequence of knowledge. Please write it down. Effectiveness is the knowledge, the know-how. Fervency is the passion that you bring to prayer. So effectiveness is the know-how. I know how to pray. I'm learning how to pray. That's the effective part of prayer. The fervent part, which is what NIV calls the power part, is the passion. The passion that you bring to the place of prayer. So that's the combination of the prayer that avails much. Can I have three more, two more gentlemen? Please push back, my brother. Two more gentlemen, quickly. Well, well dressed. Okay, you're well dressed. You know, I love our service so much because this is a service for deep people. You know, these people, uh, they don't take breakfast, they take brunch. You know, they, they are meditative people, so they we love deep things. Please stand here in front of this gentleman. Please stand here, my brother. So, this is what now, the picture that we are seeing from this text. The availability of heart combined with the knowledge on how to pray, the effectiveness, which is knowledge, combined with the fervency, which is passion, is a kind of prayer that avails much. Do you see it now? Are you seeing the, the sequence? The posture of heart, I'm available. Lord, I am learning how to pray. And the more I learn, the more my passion begins to increase. Now, you will now get to a place where you will be in touch with what you're praying. You know, when you, can, when you start, your prayer life will be, it will be, it will be on a low scale because you're growing. Father, you know, I know you, you know me, we know each other, you know how we do, you're my G. Now, you can start that place. And then now God begins to show you, ah, there is, if you really want to bring effectiveness into your prayer, 
I want to add the knowledge of scriptures in your life. So he now begins to show you scriptures that will now become part of your, of your diet of prayer. You now pick, for instance, Psalm 24 or Psalms 25, and you pick that Psalm, and you now begin to um, walk away from babbling words. Because Jesus says, don't be like the Pharisees who bring babbling words. You now say, what is the kind of, of, of words that I need to utter? They must be connected to the life which is in Scripture. You now pick Scriptures and you begin to pray. Father, according to your word in Psalm 25, it says that I will never be put to shame. I see that you are the good shepherd from your word in Psalm 23. I declare, as I see in Isaiah 61, that I am arising and shining. Now you're growing, you're growing. God is now adding another equation of knowledge to what you had. Now, the more this knowledge comes, now watch this, the more you grow in this knowledge, the more now your passion connected to what you are, you, are, you are praying. When you now pray, the Lord is my shepherd, the fervency of being able to receive that dimension kicks in and you now begin to, uh, to, to enter into a place where you posture yourself to the place where you need to receive. Because when you're saying the Lord is my shepherd, it takes you to that journey where you now realize that God is the one who supplies. You now realize that even the temple of your prayer, the sequence of your prayer, the, the, the rhythm and the melody of your prayer begins to change. Oh, I thank God but you. <laughs> we lay our lives before your throne. And besides you, Lord, no other God but you We live our lives before your throne. And besides you, Lord, no other God but you We live our lives before your throne. This is how Joshua was able to advance. <laughs> I'm available. Woo. Oh, Jesus, I'm available. And because you're available, I will show you. Now, the first time you began to pray, he brought the, the importance of scripture in prayer. Now, the next time you come to pray, he now says, I'm going to add another layer of knowledge that every time you pray, you must be willing to forgive someone who has hurt you. He, he introduces now the layer of forgiveness. <laughs> now, he will not introduce all these layers at the same time because he's watching you to this. He, he, the Holy Spirit discerns at the level and season that you are in. But now he realizes that for me to unlock more power from your prayer, he will introduce the ingredient. Now, if, if we have five people praying, all of them, the kind of knowledge that is being introduced into their prayer life is, is connected to the season and the experiences that they are going through. So you can have seven intercessors, but all of them, the kind of inspiration that they are receiving is in tandem with the season that they are in. So this place is showing you the power of scripture in prayer. You may not know even the Old Testament, so he tells you, pick the, the scriptures that you know. You bring those scriptures in prayer. I declare in the name of Jesus that I shall not go down. The, the, your word tells me that you have not given me a spirit of chaos. I do not have a spirit of fear. So at that point, you're feeling depressed and suicidal thoughts sometimes can be able to take effect. But from the power of that word, you now begin to... Now, when you're praying, you may have tears in your eyes, but it is because the fervency now is calling you out. To the place where you say, Father, if you don't help me, I cannot survive this. Now, that's fervency. Then third time he comes to pray, the Lord now checks and says, I'm going to introduce to you about the knowledge of being in a community that prays. Because there is also a blessing that is connected to corporate prayer. I, am, I, I know that you have been praying in your secret place, but I now want to show you another blessing that, is, that comes into your life from being connected to a people that pray. So the disciples in the book of Acts says that they invested themselves to the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer. They tarried together in the apostles' homes where they prayed together, they fellowshiped together, and they broke bread. Now look at all the knowledge that is being added. 
By the time this gentleman hits the next birthday, there is so much growth and stature that, he, that, that they have accumulated. And now, from, from the foundation of the knowledge that you have, you now enter into the passion of prayer. Availability, knowledge, and passion avails much in prayer. That is why now you realize that some people from the knowledge that you have received, when God tells you that I'm raising you up through prayer so that you can be able to crush patterns and cycles in your family, you receive that knowledge, that inspiration from prayer. Now, that person, when they pray, you, you will see them praying from a depth of heart because they have gotten into the place of fervency. Now, let me say this. There is no passion without knowledge. Knowledge inspires passion. So, for instance... If I know that this gentleman, I have the knowledge. Now, watch this. I know that he's a giver. I know that he can give me when I'm in need. Maybe I need a, um, a certain amount to be able to complete a certain project or to pay my school fees. And I come to him with the knowledge that he can give me. Look at the passion that I will have to move from my house to his house in search of the thing that he can give me. So it is the knowledge that I know about him that gives me the passion. I, even if I don't have capacity to get there, I will walk all the way to his house because the knowledge inspired the passion to know that he can give me. Now, the opposite is also true. If I know that he is not a giver, he will not come through for me when I'm in need. I, that knowledge will also sponsor some kind of passion. The passion is for me to walk away. I will be drawn out of his environment. Is this making sense? Please say amen if the Lord is speaking to you. It's the same thing that knowledge, when you have knowledge about who your mom is or who your dad is. Ah, every time I go to mom and dad and I talk to them, I know they will hear me out. So when, when you're hurting, you will now go to them. But, but if you don't have that kind of a knowledge, it will also sponsor other forms of ideas. So it is the knowledge that we have accumulated. So when you come to church, you receive the requisite knowledge to be able to sponsor your passion for prayer. And everyone who struggles to pray has not yet received the requisite place of knowledge that will sponsor that passion. Because you, ah, you will pray from the, from the inspiration of the knowledge you have about God and who he is you are. So when God says that you are highly favored, when God says that he's willing to hold your hand, when God says that you will not die early, I will not die, but I shall live. I can now come with that token of scripture to the place of prayer and say, Father, from the knowledge of what I have seen about you, I declare in the name of Jesus. Now, there is a way that the, the, that scripture will begin to pull you in. The fervency of what you believe. Teach us how to pray. So when our senior pastor declared that the template is Joshua, go and study Joshua and realize that he had an altar of power, which is an altar of communication with the Father. So I have used John 5.16 to introduce to you about what prayer does. Now, combine last, last week's message with this message and you'll have deeper layers of knowledge in prayer. Now, for some of you, this message will make sense in four years. For some of us, this message will make sense in ten years. You may look at yourself and say, Pastor Maxi, maybe this is a place where I have not gotten into. But keep this knowledge in your heart because when push comes to shove and when life begins to happen, at the junctions of life, this message, the Holy Spirit will remind you about this message. And this is also true for every other knowledge that you have received. The knowledge that comes from the world also has sponsored a kind of passion in our lives. So the, if I'm listening to music that, that propels the issue of anger and propels the issue of 
of, uh, of, of all this chaos that we are seeing even in terms of sexuality, that, that knowledge that is coming through the wavelength of a song will also sponsor some kind of a passion in my life. Because anger is a, is a passion that was sponsored from a knowledge of lyrics that I had through a song. So right now in your life, as young as you are, what, what, is, what is sponsoring how you're living your life currently? From even simple things in terms of how we relate with people. The person is always angry. From, from January to June, they, they have never even opened their hearts to say a positive comment about their lives. Go and watch what is sponsoring that kind of passion. The prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, last, last illustration, and then we pray. God is seeking for someone who is available. This is where prayer starts. <laughs> he will introduce to you the knowledge that you will be useful for your prayer life. From the knowledge that you have, growing day and night, that knowledge will sponsor the passion that will now take you to the prayer that will avail much. Now, when you look at the person praying, what you are not seeing is the heart. Now, that's why this heart, you cannot see it. <laughs> what we see mostly is the fervency. Oh my God. Let me sing that prayer. Siki hae maomi Unajibu kwa moto Baba Waminifu Usiki hae maomi Unajibu kwa moto Wana Waminifu Yuko mungu bingu Asiki ae maombi yetu. Yuko mungu binguni. Asiki ae maombi yetu. Tunapo omba. Asiki anajibu yesu. Tunapo omba. Asiki maombi yetu. Asiki ae maomi Anajibu kwa moto Wana Waminifu So even in prayer meetings, what we have gauged to judge whether that person is a powerful warrior in prayer is the passion they are exuding in the place of prayer. That's not where prayer begins. This passion will be empty. It can just be a release of energy. When God wants to release results in your life, he will not start from the posture you took. Your passion may be lying on the ground. Your passion may be shouting. Your passion may be, may be speaking mysteries. Even as you pray in other tongues, you bring that passion. It is useful. It is needful. But passion will only open the gate to results if it is backed up by the willing heart available heart sometimes I don't know how to pray but I'm willing connected to the knowledge about who God is from his word and who he has made you to be the combination of these two realities takes you to the place where your fervency can come so don't pay attention to your passion <laughs> because you can someone but someone, uh, person A can stand here. They are shouting, they are screaming. Person B is on the other side and he just looks to the heavens and says, Father, I have come. Now, they are not shouting, but from the depths of their heart, they are receiving the true measure of grace. So where are you in this equation? Have you even started the availability journey? And if you have started to offer your available heart to the Lord, your assignment today is to seek for knowledge from his word. Don't just pray. Focus on the word. Holy Spirit, 
bring to me the knowledge that will sponsor more passion in my life. Thank you, gentlemen. Can we pray now? <laughs> are you, uh, we are going to pray. Now, you already know how to pray. So you are going to, you are going to implement this prayer now. For 10 minutes and then I release us. Rise up on your feet. Elekasuta. First prayer point. Father, help me to posture myself in a place of humility. I'm willing. Second prayer point. Release the knowledge by your word. Whether it's going to come by scripture reading or devotion or a preaching of the word or connecting myself to a small group or going online to seek for messages and sermons that will sponsor more knowledge in my life. I'm willing, oh God. Prayer point number three. Bring more fervency from the knowledge I have accumulated. Connect me with that river that flows so that I may be one with that which I have received. Now, I'm going to leave you with the Lord for five minutes. I'll also be praying my own prayers. <laughs> Let something unlock from your life this service. The effective and the powerful prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, talk to the Father. We don't need a motivational speaker now. We don't bring motivation. We speak spirit and life. Where are you in that sequence? You can start there. Some of us have not even started to be available. Tell the Lord, I'm willing. Help me to start. Help me. Wahana Waminifu Usiki yae maombi Unajibu kwa motu Wahana Waminifu Teach us how to pray Usiki yae maombi Teach us how to pray I let Kamalaka do Sakatakata Sakila Barada Kazida Dadao Hele Sania Mahande Villa. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 wherever you are. On ground, online. Let's pray, let's pray. I am entering into the effective of prayer. The fervency of prayer. A righteous man, I'm available. My heart is available. I'm willing. For some of you, that's your prayer today. I'm willing. I'm willing. You can repeat as many times. I'm willing. I'm willing, oh God. 
I'm willing. Karisata. I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm willing from a tender age. I'm willing. I'm willing to be used by you. I want to break ceilings. I want to break ceilings. I want to I want to break patterns and cycles in my life and in my family. I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm willing to pray. I don't know how to pray, but I'm willing. I'm willing to pray. I'm willing for you to show me the journey of prayer. I'm willing, my God. I'm willing. I'm willing to start. I'm willing to pray. I'm willing. I'm willing. Help my heart. Help my mind. Help my heart and my mind. Oh, some of us, when we begin to pray, you feel like you want to sleep. When you begin to pray, it's like your body begins to shut down. Today we pray, help me, help me. Even when your flesh is weak, the Lord is still willing. Help me, my Father. I'm willing. I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm willing. Second prayer point. Add knowledge to my prayer life. Add knowledge to my prayer life. Pray that prayer, pray that prayer. Add knowledge to my prayer life. Whether by a message, whether by reading scripture, whether by a prophetic word, whether by watching sermons online, whether by reading books, whatever knowledge that must be added to my prayer life, release it. For Joshua cannot advance without the knowledge of the word. So God told Joshua, meditate upon the word day and night. When I meditate, I receive the grace. I receive the knowledge that I need to pray. Sponsor knowledge. Sponsor knowledge in my life. Release it upon my life in the name of Jesus. Third prayer point. Third prayer point. Oh, take me to the place of passion, the passion of prayer. From the knowledge I have accumulated, I want to pray with fervency. Take me back to the passion of prayer. Every prayer altar that has died, receive new fire. Receive new fire. Receive new grace. Hele my ikope. Usikiae. Hey. Unajibu. Now, if you are not born again and you want to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, or you are saying, Pastor Maxi, I, I, I was born again, but I walked away from the Lord, and I'm willing to rededicate my life to Jesus. You cannot start to pray if you have not yet entered into the life of Christ. For you, your miracle is to come to Jesus. Whether it is first time salvation, or a dedication to the Lord, back to the Lord, I'm coming back to you. We have a chance for you to receive him. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Now this is a solemn moment. Please minimize movement. You want to receive Jesus? First time or a dedication of, of your life. Please lift up your hand. The Lord is here. You want to receive Jesus. You want to receive Jesus. Please lift up your hand. Don't be afraid. The power of God is coming upon you now. Please, spectators, don't look around. Please, can you focus on your own now? Let's give them a chance. Anyone else, please lift up your hand. Rededicating your life to Jesus. Please lift up your hand. The Lord is talking to you now. We will pray with you. You, you, you will enter into another level of life from today. Ah, Thank you, Jesus. Can you search your life? Can you search your life? Can you, please don't look at those who are coming here. Please search your life. Search it, search it. Where are you with Jesus? Is he really your personal savior today? Search it, search it. Where am I in the equation of life? Jesus, I need you. And he's willing. Anyone else, please lift up your hand. Just keep it high so that I see it. Ashes, please, can we... 
Please lift it high so that I see it. Anyone else? Anyone else? I'm coming to Jesus. You've received the message today and you are willing. You are willing. You are willing. You are willing. Woo. First time or rededicating your life to Jesus. Yeah, you are willing. You are willing. He's also willing. He's also willing. He's also willing. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Believers, if you are born again, this is a good time for you to pray. Let the message sink into your life. Let it sink deeper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Last call, last call, last call. Lift up your hand. This is the last call. You are receiving Jesus. We need to pray now. Last call. Lift up your hand. You are receiving Jesus. Lift up your hand. Hallelujah. we give you praise and we honor you for who you are. Thank you, Holy Master. Hallelujah. Now, I sense that there's a lot of ministry happening upon them, so I don't want to cut short what God is doing now. I'm going to request Deacon Nathan to walk with you behind our Karibu launch so that he can lead you to Christ and then pray for you and welcome you officially into the kingdom. And as you make this choice, um, we celebrate your boldness. We celebrate your courage. It takes a lot for you to stand here, to leave away the noise of what people will say, and to follow Jesus. So we celebrate this mark. And anyone who comes to you and tells you you've made the most weird decision, don't even put attention on them. You just watch your life. You will see what God will do from your life. Where you are standing is where most of us stood in a moment like this. And when you give your life to Jesus, he takes charge of it. So my sisters, my brother, be encouraged. Today the day of salvation has come and life is coming upon you in the name of Jesus. So please walk this way. Uh, Deconate will lead you to Jesus, then pray over you, declare a blessing. The rest of us, can we, can we welcome them? Oh, come on. Is that, how, is that how you welcome these wonderful people into the kingdom? Come on, come on. Let them feel some love. Let them feel some love. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Can we appreciate their, their worship team and their band? Okay, all of you. All of you. All of you. We love you. We appreciate you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah celebrate you. Brother Shalom has been shopping since Monday. Can we appreciate Brother Shalom? He's been very busy. Shopping for... <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you blessed that you came today? Have you received the word today from the Lord? The prayer that produces results. Let's appreciate the Lord for that word. Echo with it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now lift up your hands as I release us with this blessing. Father, what a joy, what an honor to be in your presence today. I thank you for this word from James 5.16 that the effective and the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Lord, I now release the grace for every one of us to walk in the empowerment of this scripture. I pray for that willingness this week. I pray for that knowledge to come to you and for your passion of prayer not to be taken out. I declare to you that from the strength of this message that the Lord go with you. And I bless you with the same blessing that Aaron and his sons released upon the congregation of Israel. May the Lord bless you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and extend his countenance of favor upon you. 
today and even in the days to come. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.